Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Core i9-13900K. So all the reviewers out there were like, oh man, this thing draws so much power, it's hot and blah, 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 blah. So I wanted to put this to the test. It's like, what happens when you take this monstrous CPU that draws tons of power and you throw a $15 cooler on it? Is it capable enough to actually power up this CPU? And the results are quite surprising and also unsurprising. So that's what we're gonna be taking a look at here today. We're going to see if the Deepcool Gamax 400 $15 special cooler that goes on sale regularly can go ahead and handle a 13900K. For the test system, obviously we're using the Core i9-13900K that Intel sent on over for testing. We're using the ASRock Z690 Steel Legend motherboard, and I'm using the Patriot Viper Steel Series Samsung B-Die kit. Now, for this test, the RAM doesn't really matter. So we're gonna go ahead and see if this cooler can go ahead and keep this beast under control. Alrighty guys, so we're here inside of Windows with the i9-13900K. As you can see here, we're running five gigahertz, 5.5 gigahertz, and this is stock. So everything's set to auto. Uh, we have voltages and all of that set to auto. What I did is I went ahead and got the memory running at 4,000 megahertz in gear one. Uh, I didn't tune it up because for this test, it doesn't really matter. But I also got the VDDQ and the uh, VCCSA voltages at 1.25, which is what I usually run to get this memory frequency. So other than that, the CPU, though, is running at stock. Stock voltages, you see this core voltage? Look at this. Look at this insanity. 1.528. So I'm just going to let you guys know, I don't think that this is going to work. I actually haven't tested this one yet. Um, I just started tuning right away. But... Let's see how this goes, but this is kind of nuts seeing 1.528, 1.44. That's absolutely crazy. So anyways, let's see how this cooler holds up at stock straight out of the box with the CPU. All right, so the first test that I like to try out just to kind of gauge stability and whatnot is the OCCT, just the CPU test standard. It, this really isn't that demanding, but in reality, this is more demanding than most games. So... This right here is a good representation of what your average heavy workload will look like versus a synthetic workload. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and run this. Uh, by the way, even though this is Windows 10, we're using eCores, but we're using synthetic tests, so it doesn't really matter. So, uh, okay, let's go ahead and check this out. All right, as the stress test kicks in, you can see the uh, temperature jumps up right away. Um, we're around 70. This is saying 77. It's two different sensors on the package. I usually just go with whichever one's hotter. 80 Celsius. All right, how much power are we drawing? 240-ish um, watts, 237. Uh, let's see here. Voltages. I want to see what this voltage is at. Vcore 1.512 volts. That's absolute madness. I've never run a CPU at this. In fact, I'm probably going to shut this down in two seconds because that's just dumb. Um, anyways, let me go ahead and see the power again. 250. It's just going to keep going because that's nuts. Uh, let's check out our frequencies here. So 5.5 gigahertz on the P cores, 4.3 gigahertz on the E cores. That's pretty good. Um, let's check these temperatures back out. See where we are. Yeah. 90 C. This is absolutely crazy. So I already did the tuning. That's why I'm kind of freaking out about this, but I've never, never run an Alder Lake or a Raptor Lake CPU, uh, anywhere near these voltages. Uh, which is nuts. But the fact that this cooler is holding up and this thing's not thermal throttling is impressive, uh, to say the least. I, I would not have expected that with this high of a voltage, uh, 1.52. That's nuts. All right, we're going to shut this down. Um, that That's crazy. So, okay, I've already tuned the system uh, to its best, which is kind of a your mileage may vary, of course. But uh, yeah, let's see how this operates under more realistic conditions. All right, so we're back and we're running the exact same frequencies and all of that, same amount of cores, threads, none of that's changed. However, this is now running at 1.216 volts. Or it'll actually run a little higher than that when we stress it. But this is a lot better. In fact, this is uh, really good. This is a lot lower than I thought I'd be able to get this. 
to run. Now, granted, it's running at quote unquote stock, but this is significantly lower than what we just saw. So let's go ahead and see how this handles with the stress test. Alrighty, so we're running the OCCT stress test, same stress test. Uh, as you can see here, we're running at 5356C. Uh, so that is a major, major difference. Let's check out the voltage, what it's actually operating at under load. 1.216. So uh, this will actually jump up to 1.225 uh, depending on the workload. But yeah, significantly lower than 1.52. That's absolutely crazy. Going ahead and take a look at the power draw. We're only drawing 160 watts. So that is significantly lower than where we were at before. And it's pretty obvious that the deep cool cooler is going to be able to handle this voltage no problem. But what I find hilarious is the frequencies haven't changed. This is the exact same setup that we had. And uh, yeah, we're running way cooler and the system is running the exact same speeds. Now, this is not the best stress test in the world. Uh, obviously at stock, it was maxing out this cooling solution, but, uh, yeah, we got plenty of headroom now. So let's go ahead and stop this. Alrighty guys. So we're going to go ahead and do something a little bit more stressful. We're going to be doing limb pack extreme. So I already got this running. And as you can see here, we are running 70 Celsius or so. Um, I did have to go ahead and bump up the voltage a little bit. It was a little unstable on this one. It passed earlier. It's not stable now. Sometimes that happens when you're benchmarking. Um, it heats up and then you can get to like a lower point than you normally can. But checking out the voltage right now, we're at 1.24 volts in the BIOS. It's set to 1.23. It does overvolt a little bit there. On uh, in terms of power consumption, we're sitting at 215 watts. And remember, the OCCT test was pulling way more than this, and Linpack is a far more stressful test than that. Uh, looks like we already passed the first test. That's starting to go down. Frequencies, as you can see, they're rock solid, 5.5, 4.3 uh, with the E-cores. So that's going just fine. And let's see, temperature-wise, uh, we'll go ahead and see the max temperatures. We see some of the E-cores actually hit 80C. But uh, yeah, to say that a 13900K under synthetic, a very stressful synthetic workload on just a few cores is hitting 80C uh, with a $15 cooler. I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead to the point where we pass our second test. And uh, yeah, we'll check out and see exactly what the max temps, max voltages and everything else here in just a sec. Alrighty, so we just got our second pass on uh, Linpack. And let's go ahead and see what the max temperatures were across the cores. So the P cores actually run pretty cool. So if we take a look at those, the max we got was 74, but most of those were actually under 70 C. And remember, this is a 13900 K on a $15 cooler. And we're going ahead and running at 5.5 gigahertz. Yes, that's stock, but that's still very, very fast. And the P cores one hit 74 and all the rest are under 70. That's nuts. Now, let's take a look at the E-cores. These definitely get a bit warmer. Uh, obviously, they're smaller and more crammed together. But let's see, we got a couple of 80s, 82, 82, 83, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, uh, blah, 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 blah. So we come down here, we go to the core max, 83. 83 on one or two cores, and that was it under uh, Linpack Extreme. And that's all because we went ahead and tuned down our voltages instead of running at 1.52, which is absolutely insane, and bringing our power draw down to a more reasonable level. Well, alrighty, guys, there you have it. So, yeah, the $15 special cooler can go ahead and handle the Core i9-13900K when you properly manage the voltages. Now, this particular sample is probably pretty good. I mean, the voltages are way lower than I was thinking for 5.5 gigahertz on the P cores and 4.3 on the E cores, which is stock, but that's still pretty high. So even if, let's say, you don't have as good of a sample and you have, you know, 50 millivolts higher, so that'd be like 1.28, 1.29, this cooler is actually still going to be just fine for you. As we saw, the P cores didn't really get all that warm, even under Linpack Extreme. The E cores might get a little hot and may thermal throttle a little bit, depending on the conditions, 
but overall it's going to go ahead and perform rather well regardless. So even if you don't get the best bin, you should still be able to use such a cheap cooler. Now, what this test really goes to show is that straight out of the box, Intel is pushing these things just way too far. And the reason why they're doing that is the single core boost goes all the way up to 5.8 gigahertz. And depending on the bin of the chip, obviously it might need that 1.5 volts or whatever to do that, just so they could meet their really high spec. In reality, for most people, just going ahead and setting that lower voltage and not worrying about, you know, a couple hundred megahertz, which won't really impact performance a whole lot, makes a lot more sense. Now, if you get a really good bin like what I have, maybe you go ahead and bump up that 50 extra millivolts, maybe get up to 5.6, 4.4 on the uh, E cores. I did not test that out. I didn't try uh, overclocking because in all honesty, 100 megahertz just isn't gonna make that much of a difference. The goal here was to see if the cheapo Deepcool Gamex 400 that I recommend for anybody for a super budget build can actually handle the fastest and most power hungry CPU on the market here today. And I think I have proven definitively that it can. So when you see the mainstream guys go out and say, yeah, this runs really hot and loud and blah, 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 blah. It's because they're running it just straight out of the box. With just a few minutes of tuning, you can go ahead and get these things running way cooler. And this also applies to things like Zen 4. You can get those running way under that 95C if you go ahead and set a more reasonable voltage and go ahead and set more reasonable frequencies on the high end. So I know a lot of guys out there that have done that and they run anywhere between 70 and 80C. So with Intel, AMD, whoever it is, it makes a lot of sense for you guys to go ahead and save money. You don't have to buy big expensive cooling because these are running very, very fast straight out of the box. You don't really need to do much in the way of overclocking anymore in terms of like CPU frequency. Sure, it might be cool to say you have 5.8 or even six gigahertz, but is it really worth buying like a $250 cool, cooling setup to go ahead and do that versus saving all of that money, getting a $15 cooler or something like the uh, Deepcool AK620s that I like to use for about $50 to $60. I would recommend something like that over this, but this is just an extreme example to show what can technically be done. Uh, but anyways, you can save all that money and then put that towards a better graphics card, better RAM, better motherboard, whatever. And in my opinion, that makes a whole lot more sense. So if you guys were on the fence or if you were worried about this sort of stuff, just go ahead, go in your BIOS, go ahead and do a little tweaking and just lower that voltage to something more reasonable. Smart way to go is start at 1.3 volts and just work your way down. And yeah, once it stops working, then you go ahead and crank it back up, leave it there, call it a day. And as long as your thermals are in check, you're doing just fine. So alrighty guys, if you like this video, please go ahead and smash that like button. Please subscribe, please share with friends. If you wanna help support the channel and independent testing like this, you can go ahead and do so by clicking the little join button down below or use the Patreon links in the video description. And if you're interested in picking up any of the parts that we're talking about here today, you can go ahead and click the affiliate links down below. That also helps support the channel. And I wanna thank all of you guys that do that. You can also go ahead and chat with myself and Paul from Not An Apple Fan over on the Techonomics podcast twice a week by becoming a subscriber. Links are down below for that as well. And we can chat about this sort of stuff. So I found this one super interesting. In the next video, I'm going to be taking a look at the B660 motherboards paired with the i7 13700K and see if we can retain all of its stock frequencies, which once again is very, very high compared to something like Alder Lake. And maybe you don't even need a Z series board as well. As we just saw, 5.5 gigahertz is pretty solid for 13900K. We'll see what the 13700K can bring. That's a little bit more value oriented for an eight core processor or an eight P core processor anyway. And I'm really interested to see if we can get the voltages down like we did on this one, keep everything in check, get you cheap motherboard, cheap cooler, super fast CPU, and just have everything work. So if you wanna go ahead and check that out, once again, smash that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. I look forward to seeing you there and seeing you on the live streams. And that's really all I have for you guys here today. And I will catch you guys in the next video.